streamed and on MLB Network. Please state your name and your affiliation before you ask your question. We'll start with Derek saying a few words. We'll pass it to Carlos, and then we'll open it up for questions. Uh, just to open this up, I, I spent a little bit of time with Carlos. Uh, I think I speak for all of Twins territory that we're very, very excited for what he brings to the table, not only on the field, but off the field. So, Carlos, welcome. Welcome. We're excited. I'm going to pass it to Derek for some opening remarks, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Dustin. Appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here uh, on this uh, exciting, great day for, for Twins baseball. Um, I want to say a few thank yous and, and turn it over to, to Carlos here uh, in a minute to say a few things. But, you know, first and foremost, you know, I want to thank our ownership, you know, Jim Polad and the Polad family. Uh, a, a momentous day like this, a significant uh, contract like this with a player of Carlos's stature only happens with the partnership and support of ownership. And, and Jim Polad, uh, our club president, Dave St. Peter, the Polad family have continued to invest in the Minnesota Twins in a way that allows uh, today's day to happen. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. I also want to thank our whole baseball operations crew, uh, from, from Thad to Rocco to all of our leaders within the space, you know, the creative work that each of you have done to allow us to get to today, I think, uh, I think is a great testament to the work uh, around our organization and, and what, is, what is in store for us this season and beyond. Uh, I want to thank Scott. Scott, Scott Bor and the Boris Corporation uh, and his whole crew of, of folks. This only happens, a deal like this only happens if there's trust, respect, admiration and finding the right combination of, of fit for the player uh, and, and fit for the organization. And, and Scott was a tremendous partner in that for us. Uh, and for that, I'm, I'm incredibly thankful. Uh, and then lastly, Carlos, you know, last but not least, you know, I, I want to thank Carlos and Daniela uh, and new little boy Kylo for, for joining the, the Minnesota Twins family. You know, Carlos had a lot of choices, as, as he should. He's one of the best players in our game, uh, and it's special. And for him to choose Minnesota, uh, to be a part of our organization, to join the Twins family is, is just really special. I, you know, I've watched Carlos as a player. We all know the accolades from Rookie of the Year to Gold and Platinum Gloves, All-Star, and ultimately World Series champion. Uh, it's who he is. But I will tell you that from the day we got on the Zoom uh, to chat with him to through our dinner last night, I've gotten to know the person. And, and this guy, through and through, is a leader, uh, is someone that's going to continue to elevate everyone around him in our organization. That's why he's here beyond the, the play on the field, which is stellar, what he does uh, for an organization, what his teammates in, the, in Houston have said about him, what coaches who've been around him have said about him. I'm just incredibly thrilled and thankful that you've chosen the Twins as the next place for the next chapter in your baseball career. So with that, I'm going to throw a jersey on here uh, and officially welcome Carlos to the organization. And then uh, he'll have a few words for you all. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, uh, Dustin. I want to thank uh, Thad and our owner um, for making this possible, right? Um, I want to also thank my family, uh, my wife. She's watching at home with our little baby, our little newborn. Um, thank you for all your support. To my parents, uh, they've always been there uh, with me from the moment I was eight years old. And I told my dad, hey, dad, I want to learn English because when I get to the big leagues, I want to be able to speak for myself. And, uh, you know, as a, as a poor family growing up and him working in construction, he got an extra job so he could pay for that school and I could learn English. Um, to Scott for making this possible, um, truly the best. And uh, I'm super excited to, to join uh, the Twins family. Um, you know, I'm here and uh, when we talked on the Zoom call, we only talked about winning. And that's what we want to build here. We want to build a championship culture. Uh, we want to move forward and, uh, you know, win divisions, win championships. And uh, that's my goal here, uh, make everybody around us better and just move forward with championship mentality. So thank you for having me. Super excited, like I said, and really looking forward to this, this uh, new chapter in our lives. Mike Max from WCC Radio and Television. Uh, Carlos, the other day we were talking, and you 
seeing the clubhouse and we were greeting everybody there. And, and uh, you know, it was just kind of a natural leadership flow of the visitors, Rod Carew and the different players. Uh, how do you, is it natural for you to lead because it was so obvious the way people gravitated to you and you making sure that you talked to the usher and the security guard that this was a very uh, big piece of who you are in terms of your persona? What does what Carlos Correa, the leader, mean? Yeah, for me, it's not like I come in and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to be a leader. Or I'm going to be a leader. For me, it's, you know, I just want to be myself. I just want to get to know my teammates. I want to get to know where, I, where they're coming from, their background. I want to know them as a person because I already know the player they are, right? And I know the potential and the talent that's in there. But I want to get to know them as a person and I, I want to get to know, you know, what they want to achieve this year. And, uh, you know, if, if I can help them in any way with some information to get better, at the end of the day, that's going to be great for the team. And it's going to give us a big chance to go out there and win the division. Carlos, uh, <clears throat> right here, uh, Dan Hayes with The Athletic. This all came together so quickly. Um, you've been with Houston your whole life. What did it take to get comfortable with coming to the Twins? Uh, it was pretty easy, honestly. Um, you know, before this entire process of uh, free agency, you know, once the season was over, you know, uh, my wife asked me, like, how is it going to be if we ever leave? And I said, babe, what, what do we do on a daily basis when we're in the middle of the season? You know, we, we watch movies, we go eat to restaurants, and now we take care of the baby. Every city in the United States has that. So wherever we go, we're going to be fine. Um, and then when, when, when we put it into perspective and she just saw it like that, she's like, oh, I guess you're right. Yeah, so, you know, whatever, whatever life takes us, we're going to be ready. We're going to be ready to go out there, help the team win. And I, I got to tell you, I cannot be more excited. Minnesota is beautiful. Um, I've been there. And when Scott told me all the twins, I said, I'm in. Hey, I'm Betsy from the Pioneer Press. Um, we've talked about how quickly this came together. Um, from, I guess, for each of you, can you tell us what Friday was like, how hectic of a day you know, that was for you guys? Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll start, Betsy. I, I think, uh, you know, as we know, this has been an unusual off season, you know, all the way through. And so there have been uh, different starts and stops along the way. But I can tell you that when we had a chance, we've obviously had some conversations with Scott about a number of players. Uh, when he expressed that this may be a fit for Carlos, and it certainly was for us, it went pretty quickly from there because, you know, very, it was very clear Scott had presented that, that Carlos had real interest in us, and we, we knew who the player was, right? And we had done our homework beforehand. Uh, and when we talked creatively about the ways to make this happen, uh, it, was, it was really seamless. You know, Scott knows our organization. We know, we, we know plenty about him and, and what he's looking for, for where he wants to play some of the players. And then when we learned Carlos, when we got on that Zoom, I can tell you within the first kind of five minutes, it felt like it was really natural and a really good fit. I think, you know, when you, uh, for Carlos, it, this is about performance and being optimal. And uh, he had told me, he goes, these are, these are some of the places I see the ball really well. And when he mentioned Minnesota, I went and looked up the, the data. And I said, well, he just has a, a very small 1,200 OPS over there. So I, we, we knew immediately when a player's that comfortable in a ballpark, um, we knew that there was uh, a joint fit. And, and I want to thank. <laughs> Derek and Thad Levine and, and, and the Polad family for the, when these things happen and you're talking about the gravity of this kind of player, um, it, it has such a major impact. And obviously, on the contract side, it, it's, uh, it's probably not a customary phone call <laughs> every now and then to do things at the pace that we do them. But it, for me, when you have a player that can perform well, uh, perform at his optimum, and you have a place that he's so comfortable with and familiar with, um, it just creates a, a, a synergy between the two that you know is the correct fit. And, you know, the, uh, I know this, that, you know, all the AL Central, you know, there's a, the Twins have a new explosive weapon, C4. <laughs> Yeah, for for us it was uh, it was it was a hectic uh, night to say the least. Um, I remember Scott walking to the house around 6 p.m. and then by 10 p.m. we were in the Zoom call, and uh, you know before getting on the Zoom call, I I walked into the room. My my wife was breastfeeding the baby, trying to put him to sleep, and I said, "Babe, um, there might be a big chance that we're going to Minnesota." He's like, "Just like that? Like really? Like that quick?" And I'm like. 
yeah, we're going to get on a Zoom call right now. So she got in the Zoom call for a little bit. Um, I talked to Rocco. I talked to, you know, Derek and Thad. And, you know, they made me feel like this was the place for me to be. It's, it's, they made me feel like this was going to be my next home. And, uh, you know, when I got out of the, out the Zoom call, I told Scott, let's make it happen. And I told my wife, to start packing. Um, we're going to Minnesota, and uh, we're going to go out there and have fun and, and help the organization win. So here we are. Super excited. Carlos and Scott, uh, Doe Young Park with MLB.com. Uh, when and why um, did you become comfortable with and ultimately open to accepting a shorter term deal to come here in Minnesota? Well, the, the contract format, I think, after the um, certainly a long lockout was that uh, finding placeholders for a thought process where you're looking at a long, long relationship is very difficult for ownership and for teams, roster management, construction, all the things that the diligence that they apply to uh, put put their teams together for the long term. And it was very apparent that that um, that uh, particularly with all the thought that went into the operation of the game at the ownership level to get the game moving again, that the focus was was not there for that type of consideration. And so obviously we wanted to build a bridge, but our, our biggest and Carlos's biggest concern was, I, I want to go somewhere where I play well, do well, and I want to have a chance to win. And certainly Minnesota um, created that, that scenario for him. What was the question again, sorry? Uh, when and why did you become open to accepting a shorter term offer? Yeah, you know, being with Scott and then having the discussions uh, post lockout, um, we saw that a short term was the best way to go about it. And, uh, you know, um, when he came to me with the Twins offer, you know, um, it was something that, that I really wanted to do, a place I wanted to go, um, and it felt right. So we made the decision, and like I told Rocco and uh, I told Derek, you know, we're not seeing this like a one-year thing. We're seeing this as I want to build a championship culture in this organization. I want to show you guys what I can do and what I can bring to the table so we can, you know, have a long-term relationship at some point. Um, so I'm very excited to show them that, to show them what I can do and, and, and for this team to start building, you know, that championship mentality and that championship level for years to come. Jake Sander with the Associated Press for Derek. Uh, Minnesota as a market has traditionally ranked with Cleveland and Pittsburgh and Tampa, some of these smaller markets. We don't see those teams landing players of Carlos's uh, quality on the free agent market. One I say to speak for those franchises, but what's been the difference in Minnesota that set you guys up to to make a deal like this? Well, I think it, central is is ownership. You know, I think at the end of the day, you know, when I had a call with, remember at the beginning of the off season, you know, we had some conversations about the entire free agent landscape, and Carlos was right at top of that list. You know, we weren't sure where it would take us at that stage. Obviously, we then had the lockout and coming out of it. Uh, but when I called uh, Jim Polad back, you know, as we were getting closer to this on Friday, uh, immediate support. I mean, there's no other way to describe it. You know, he said, yeah, let's find a way to make this happen. And I think that is just a true testament to how much Jim cares about investing in this team, trying to compete. We've done that every year. Uh, we've had some good seasons along the way. We, we haven't achieved what Carlos is describing and, and achieving more. And this, that was the goal. And that was the goal from ownership all the way through. And that's the only way something like this happens. Hannah Kaiser from Yahoo Sports. This is a similar question for Derek, but I also want to open it up to Carlos. You guys are coming off a really difficult year, and I'm sort of curious what the conversations were like this offseason about recommitting to sort of winning again and trying again and not taking a step back. So that's for Derek, and then also for, for Carlos and Scott, sort of how the twins went about convincing you that this is a place that you can win and even win a championship again. Well, I think as we started the offseason, again, getting back to conversations with ownership and talking about the, the landscape of where we were, we looked at this club. There's a lot of players in that clubhouse that, that won the division in 19 and 20, you know, and a lot of young players that grew and developed that are now going to be Carlos's teammates uh, that, are, that were a big part of that. We certainly did not have the success we were hoping to have last year. But you really have two choices there. You can, you can go and look at it and try and dig deep and figure out where you can improve and what are opportunities for improvement. Or you can take a different path. And we just we chose right from the get-go, how do we figure it out? Because we think we have a talented group of players in that room, great leadership, adding more leadership like Carlos to it, signing Byron to the long-term extension to start the offseason and, and ultimately make some changes like adding a Sonny Gray and others that have come along the way. We're just excited about the group that's in that room, and I think we can go compete. Yeah, the conversations we had 
um, for about two and a half hours that we were on the Zoom call. It was all about winning. I, and and when, I, when I get that from them, you know, that makes me excited because you know, I, I want to take up on the challenge. Uh, it was not long ago when I was playing for an organization that it was last in the big leagues um, the year before I got there, you know, losing 100 plus games. So um, I know what it takes to build um, a championship culture within the clubhouse. It starts within the clubhouse and all the way up to the front office. So I see that here with the talent that we have and I see that we can get so much better in order for us to accomplish that goal to ultimately win a championship. Uh, yeah, Tyler Kepner uh, with the New York Times. I have a question for Carlos and Scott. Um, first for Carlos, so the Twins have had some good teams during your big league career, haven't been able to get over the hump. What have you seen from across the way about this team that uh, you know gives you encouragement that you can help them take that next step? Yeah, I, I, see, I see the talent. Um, in the clubhouse, and, and, and I get excited because, you know, when I talk to the guys, um, you know, with, with the right information and the right work that we can put in as a team, I think we can get so much better um, than what the stats looked like last year. And, uh, you know, that's something we're going to work out through, through spring training, through the regular season, and, uh, you know, everybody putting in their work, everybody getting better. Uh, every single day, we're going to have a really good chance. Also for Scott, um, you know, you were out in... Scottsdale the other day with a, a deal with Colorado um, and here with the Twins. I think those are some teams maybe some people were surprised are, are stepping out like this. Um, are you seeing or are you hopeful of seeing more um, maybe unexpected teams signing these big, you know, landmark kind of deals, um, whether it's the new CBA or, or what? It seems like that's probably good for baseball. Well, I, th I think ownership and, and everybody involved understand this is part of winning, that you're going to have to have uh, in the middle of your lineup um, these extraordinary players. Uh, they're veteran. They, they bring a tone, a voice, a message to the, to the locker room. Because all the development that you do and you're drafting and you're uh, bringing the players to the major league locker room, once they arrive there, there is a whole different language and message of the major leagues that comes from veteran players. And they all remember their moments, and they all remember their times when they uh, first learned in a locker room what they learned from the veterans around them. And so it's a very, very important element to, to winning. And, um, and I think that uh, it's rare that you have brilliant talents who are also great leaders and communicators. And when they are available, they're franchise changing. Hey, Carlos. Uh, Carlos, you uh, you and Byron were drafted 1-2 in 2012. What have your conversations been like these last couple of days about being up the middle together there? Uh, they've been great. They've been great. We, we've been having some really good conversations. Uh, we've been talking about defense a lot and uh, you know, improving as, as a whole um, defensively uh, this year. Um, you know, we, we, we talked about so many things and, you know, I'm, I get to play with such a dynamic player, uh, you know, in, in the roster and at such a great leader uh, for this organization that, you know, the job, it, it, ma it makes my job easier when you have a guy like Byron in your team. So, you know, he's ex extremely talented, uh, one of the best players in the game. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to take the field with him. Uh, Jordan Schusterman, Fox Sports. Uh, following up on, on the Buxton part, um, I think I see a picture up there of you maybe at a pre-draft workout uh, from back then. Obviously, the Twins had the second pick. What do you remember about that process? Did you ever play with Byron in high school at any showcases? And then any memories of playing with him you know, or against him up through the minor leagues? Yeah, um, we actually played a lot, uh, especially in high school. We were doing all the showcases and all the pre-draft workouts. Um, you know, I remember doing one for the Twins um, back then. Um, and then in the minor leagues, you know, uh, Low A faced him when he was with City of Rapids. I was with Quad Cities. And then we were together in the All Star game that year. Um, and throughout the minor leagues, we've been playing against each other. And then eventually we made it to a big league. So, you know, it's good to see him having the success he's having and, uh, you know, be finally part of his team. Uh, Jeff Passan, <clears throat> ESPN. Um, on the Zoom call, Carlos, was there a particular moment that you knew this is the right fit? And same for you, Derek. Going into it, you thought this might be. Was there something that Carlos said that made you say, OK, this is the guy, this is it? Yeah, for me, it was just how the, the, the vibes I got and how they made me feel. 
um, especially talking to Rocco and, you know, um, hearing so many great things about him from, from all the players that play for him. You know, I want to be on a place where I want to feel like I can communicate with my manager and my manager's going to have my back all the time. And that's exactly what I got from Rocco. And, you know, he's, he's, he's the guy I'm going to be working the closest with. So um, when, when I feel like I have a manager that I can trust, that I can communicate with, for me, that's, that's just game changer. You know, Jeff, I think for, for us on the other side, and we talked about it after the call, it was, it was as much, we know the player, we know the quality of the talent. It was him talking about how he wanted to impact others and, and teammates and lift, you know, as Scott said, lift others around him and impact our team. That just makes, that's a special conversation. You don't have that every day. Uh, it was genuine. And even when Daniela got on the call briefly while she was trying to put the baby to bed, but got on, she wanted to know about the environment, you know, and, and what, and we talked about the resources around our team uh, and what it's like to live in Minnesota. It just felt right then like the right fit. That was the moment. Phil Miller from the Minneapolis Star Tribune. Uh, Carlos, I think the, uh, for all three of you actually, I think the supposition around baseball is that this is a one-year contract essentially. Uh, what has to happen for that not to be the case? And Derek, how important is it to you that it not be the case? Well, I'll start with it. And I would just say this, that you know, we in enter into this for all the reasons we just discussed about how much we love Carlos is how do we make this you know, look like a, 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 a long-term partnership. But we recognize that takes work and time, and we're going to invest and get to know each other over that time. The contract structure is creative and unique, and we'll address that at the right time. But we're just excited about having him here now and building that relationship and seeing where it takes us. Yeah, for me, it's first things first. I'm focused on winning, and I'm focused on, on, on building the championship culture that, that I've been preaching um, ever since I got here. Um, so for me, it's just go out there, help my teammates get better every single day, go out there and you know play hard, be there for my manager every single day, and uh, eventually build that championship culture. Hi, Carlos. I'm Megan Ryan with the Minneapolis Star Tribune as well. Um, I was curious, I think that you were working a little bit with Royce Lewis uh, yesterday. Um, how important is it for you, or are you maybe excited for that opportunity to, to mentor like a shortstop of the future and uh, work with him in that way? Yeah, um, super exciting because uh, he reminds me a lot of myself when I was in the minor leagues, right? And, uh, you know, like I told him yesterday, there's some things that I know now that I wish I knew back then when I was in the minor leagues or when I was 20 years old. So I'm an open book. I'm here for you. Whatever you need, just ask me. Um, but he's a special talent. Obviously, he was a, a first pick overall. And uh, the future is bright for him. Um, he's, he's a hard worker. I, I love his attitude. And you know, I, I talked to him. We, we've built a, a good relationship in the, in the few days that I've been here. We've been exchanging texts and all that. Um, I knew accidentally I took his number. Roy, sorry. That's, I got him a watch for it. But um, um, yeah, he's a, he's a special kid. And you know, I love hanging with him. And I love talking baseball with him. <clears throat> and I can see that he's uh, just baseball 24-7 like me. And <clears throat> when you're like that, uh, success is going to find you. So the future is bright for him. Carlos, obviously, uh, Rocco's, uh, you know, you could be batting leadoff one day and, and third the next day. Uh, when you look at, you know, you've got a guy there that played the game for a long period of time and is, is puts a priority on keeping his <clears throat> players relaxed so they can perform. From the outside looking in, how did that look to you when, the, you know, the Twins went to kind of power ball and they juggled the lineup a lot? Uh, how does that look to you as a player and having someone that uh, – understands, you know, where you come from as your manager. Yeah, he, he's the manager, so, you know, he's going to make the lineup, he's going to make the decisions, and I will never question them. I will just be there for him, and I will follow him, and I will play uh, the best as I can to help the team win. So, you know, the decisions that he makes, I'm always going to be right behind him. And, uh, you know, we, we I'm, I'm a great communicator. He's a great communicator. So um, I'm expecting a really fun season um, alongside him. For, uh, for Derek and Carlos, what impact are you hoping Carlos's October experience will have on this clubhouse, just given the history here? And Carlos, uh, more specifically, what kind of advice will you bring to the team, assuming you guys are able to get there in October and are playing there this postseason? Yeah, for, for us, I mean, we look at it as he's, he's a, you know, a World Series champion, right? He's done a lot of things individually on the field, but the impact he's had in those most meaningful games 
you know, when we saw it you know, firsthand, unfortunately, in 2020 and the impact that he had right against us in that first round of the playoffs and just how much he pushed those guys, even you know, they didn't have the best regular season that they were intending to. But once they got there, kind of turned it up a notch and you could see what he could do and lead. And I think about, you know, twins historically. I mean, I look in this room, I see Rod Carew sitting back there and Royce Lewis and Latroy Hawkins and others that have been around. We lean on these guys and their experiences to, to help us get better. That's our organizational philosophy. Carlos is now going to elevate it from, from his experiences and add to that group. Yeah, for me, um, the advice is to just go out there and, and when we're taking uh, practice, uh, we're, we're searching for perfection. Um, every infield we take, every, every round in BP we take, every, every um, reps we take in the cage, um, we're looking for something. We're, we're working with a purpose. And, uh, you know, that's what I want to preach to the guys here. Just don't work through the motions. If, if, if you want to be an elite defender, you got to practice like you're going to play it in the game. And if you want to be an elite hitter, you got you to gotta, uh, practice with intent. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of young guys on the team, a lot of guys, I haven't got to see them all on the field yet. But, you know, that's a culture we want to build here. We want to practice uh, with intent. We want to try to be perfect in practice. So when it comes game time, we're ready to go. Uh, Aaron Gleeman from The Athletic. Carlos, you mentioned you mentioned the jersey switch. What's the significance for you of, of number four? Yeah, you know, just a new chapter, a new number, uh, like number four. Um, so there's no, not much meaning to it. Just, you know, new chapter, new team, new number. Uh, Carlos, Ted Swetzler with Twins Daily. Um, now, obviously, switching to a new infield, have you worked at all with Jorge Polanco? Have you studied any of his video? How does that look now moving away from El Tuve up the middle? Yeah, um, talked to him uh, in depth uh, yesterday uh, when we were in the infield. Um, today, I'm looking forward to go out there and, and, and you know have my first infield with the, with the full uh, squad. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have a lot of conversations. You know that 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 combination uh, uh, through the middle uh, is very important um, to win games, to turn those double plays, to not give any extra outs to your opponent. Uh, so definitely, I'm gonna be working very closely with him, turning double plays, getting to know him, for him to get uh, to know me. And I'm really excited. He's a special talent. He's a special kid, and uh, you know I I, I love him. Um, we mentioned your history with Buxton. Is there anyone else on this current roster that you already had a previous relationship through baseball? Obviously, you've been with the Astros your whole career, but is there anyone else you already know and are familiar with, or are they all really fresh faces? No, uh, actually, I played a lot against Sano, against Kepler in the minor leagues, um, Polanco also. So, you know, we have had relationships since back then, way back when, uh, you know, I was in, in the minor leagues. Uh, there are some of the guys that went through the Astros organization. Uh, Derek Fisher is there. Um, there's Garza, he's there, um, guys that had really good relationships with over there, so uh, it's good to see them here also. Okay, with that, I think we're going to show off that, that jersey. Carlos, can we stand up and get a photo op? I'm going to move these chairs.